Uh, how about a little bit of a ProRes you know, raw up, up, update? update? Is anything new happening? I know uh, the Z A lot Z more camera. metadata. A lot more metadata coming in. So if you think about um, and that ecosystem, you'd have seen out the front. We've uh, we've created our Manchester United, which is the Atomus United team, and all of those camera makers, as well as the disc makers, um, and of course the software that's supporting it, especially on the Mac and the Final Cut 10. The, the main thing for us is to support more and more cameras. So at this show you see S1H at full frame 6K coming out to a, to a Ninja to record at 30 frames a second. Killer solution. It's the world's first full frame 6K output from a camera. Um, and they're leading the way, definitely. Uh, at the same time, we've announced the shipping of the Z6 and 7 before the big selling season in um, at the end of the year. So we can expect that probably around the November time frame. Yeah, it's fully functional. In yeah, November. we've got it here. Yeah. But Nikon are a very conservative company. They're doing obviously their own QA processes and we're involved in that. We're not the only feature that they're upgrading. They've got um, some new autofocus on those cameras. They inbuilt a, a lot of upgradability into the, into the Z series. Mm -hmm. And so we're part of that process to get those firmwares out. And I think they, they copy a bit of heat for people thinking that there's a paid upgrade for the raw output. What it is, you've got to send it back to their service center to calibrate the sensor on the HDMI raw output. Now. Okay. You've got to pay for getting it there. Yeah. If you drive yourself there, then it doesn't cost you okay. <laughs> to do so that. So there's no real real hardware update or upgrade to the camera. It's a more of a calibration. Not that I'm aware labor. of. Not that I'm aware of. Um, I believe that that's what they're doing internally. I'm not. I didn't make the Nikon camera, right. but that's what it looks like to us. Um, okay. They send us units for testing, so they've done all that before we get them. Um, but yeah, the performance is is quite amazing, and you get that 12-bit color mm -hmm. depth as well as the 10-bit raw. Yeah. Um, Oh, sorry, 12-bit linear RAW, which is you know quite spectacular once once you start to move the colors around, and so I mean Nikon's an amazing company for the image quality yeah. and have their own way to process that. So you get all that in, and we've it's been a good process for us to learn how they treat an image and the pixel. Um, so in terms of the ProRes RAW ecosystem, your question, the FS, FX9, we're working on 16-bit deep color from that camera at up to 4K 120 frames a second, wow. which is pretty impressive. They announced it this morning, as you know. Um, it's a mini Venus as a camera, and they're using all that cinema knowledge to give you the ability to actually work really, really um, at a high level for those music videos, documentaries, and events. So that's expanding. I think we're up to something like six, 15 or 16 cameras that are recording to ProRes RAW. Um, and it's, you know, we, we know the customers that are using it. Uh, there's a lot of talk about different RAW formats and we're really focused on giving the best performance on the cameras that our customers want to use and they're mainly Sony, Panasonic, Nikon, etc. And it's the metadata improvement because we're capturing a lot of lens data, we're capturing camera data. A lot of people think that there's no um, metadata yeah. inside ProRes RAW because some people say that, some competing formats say that. That's never been the case. We are recording all of the data that the camera is giving us, um, which is significant. You know, it's hundreds and hundreds of, of settings per frame, in, some of them even per line of scanning on the sensor, things like image stabilization, which only the advanced cameras have, um, auto detect phase pixels that give you this, you know, wonderful tracking. And I think customers misunderstand how difficult it is to do some of those things. And when you remove those features, it's easier to make a camera. Mm. But when they're in there, it's, it's, it's far tougher. And there's not a feature missing from all the top Japanese camera makers. And they're taking it to 6K, they're taking it to 8K. And as I said, the, the Neon series is showing that image and we're going to end up there really, really fast. Yeah, I think metadata is one of those things that we don't even, well, I think about it. But yeah. I know a lot of people don't even realize how powerful having all of that after the fact, be able to get your f-stop, be able to yep. get your ISO ratings, and you know the the distance that you were had your lens set at if it's a zoom. These things are amazingly important in post, and uh, you know once we have it, we're, we're never ever so, not going to want it. That's right, and and so I, I there was a I think this is the first time I've been on camera with you guys since um, since WWDC where. Apple announced their new Mac Pro, mm -hmm. and they showed 8K ProRes RAW, yeah. and, and everyone went with the accelerator afterburner board to help accelerate that, yeah. and they said, so where did that come from? And you would have seen on our announcement on that day is to say, well, it came from Canon and us. So we went over to Kenya to do a shoot with Apple for the launch of that. You notice they showed some giraffes and stuff there, um, and that was an amazing experience, but the metadata 
and the 8K, so that ProRes RAW ecosystem is 8K already. Mm -hmm. We've done that. Mm -hmm. And who did we do it for? We did it for the productions that have been asking for it. Yeah. The Apple original series that will be using it to, yeah. to go to the next level. So it's, it's, it's under the radar a bit, but that, it came from us. Anyone who's wondering where that footage came from, it came from Canon, which we're showing here, the 8K camera head, which originally was, has, a, has a video processing unit next to it in Japan, NHK use it, but we took that camera and we captured the RAW, so you just got the camera head. So it's like, I think you guys are using like a C200 or something here, right? Yeah, so it's a, it's, it's a little bit bigger than that because it's just the camera head doesn't record internally, but you put a Neon with our 8K master control unit that, you, that is the upgrade for all the Neons, and you've got a full AK production ready uh, product, which you'll be shipping at the end of the year. So we've got a lot of um, evolve, evolving ecosystem of ProRes RAW, and we're fully committed to it. And you can expect more and more cameras over the next six months to a year and into the future. I want to be at like 30 cameras by end of next year. Um, and they're bespoke, you know, development projects, which keep us able to give the, that advice to the camera makers on what you guys are asking for. So keep the requests coming in. Um, we've been very busy recently, so if we haven't answered fast enough, I'm, I was getting a bit of flack for the support team not getting back within you know the 24-hour period that we normally hold ourselves to. It's because we've sold over 150,000 products last year, yeah. um, and you break things and you fix them, but you definitely have my commitment as, as our customers and as a company that really does care about that support level, um, that we're working hard to make sure we get the answers to you, that we put the features in that you want. And if you've got new features, we definitely want to hear about it because we often sit there and go, what else could we do? Yeah. And But we're quite removed from the production process other than through our customers because we're making the stuff for you and the tools that you need or that we think you need and the more you're vocal the easier it is for us to deliver the right thing to you.